expected, what are the goals, kind of get to know the population that we work with, what, what has worked in the past, what, the, what happened. In terms of students, we, are, we, start, we started with our mentorship new student program, because you know, stu new students are a very fragile population, uh, at least for us in the university, a lot of uh, uncertainty, but in online spaces, it's really difficult to keep track of those students and help them ease into, the, uh, into campus life. And so we started with a new, sec uh, new student section that didn't work out the way we expected. We did like some live sessions with Blackboard Collaborate, but they would never go uh, into those. Uh, so we were rethinking of how we we're gonna approach. We, they, we have them in our community as well as inside Blackboard. And we noticed that they have been using that a lot. So we're taking the mentor, which is a psychology professor and our uh, professional counselor. So they can both be and interact with the students and be uh, contacts inside that community. We also have been working in a way creating uh, resources, multimedia resources in English, math, and Spanish, where students mostly come from public schools in the region, and those students really come to some de deficiencies that we don't have uh, remedial courses because they were uh, eliminated from the academic offer a few years ago. So we have to do, I mean, we yeah, usually, uh, we have the typical complaint, oh, but we, we have students that are not they don't possess the skills they need, uh, college level skills for English math, but we need to do something about it. You can't expect it to jump and, and, and get into the college level like that. But we know also that uh, the professor doesn't have enough time during the semester, like that first course, to get them up to speed. So we started working on materials that they can access anytime so, so they can brush up and get to college level in math and English and Spanish. And then so we're working on creation of Center for Entrepreneurship. Uh, I think it's something that the university is really encouraging to promote that our students follow the entrepreneur path because different organizations are closing, are shrinking, are downsizing, so we need to start thinking about how are we gonna help our students, you know, with the gainful employment that we are gonna be held accountable uh, sooner or later. Well, we need to work with that and entrepreneurship is a way to tackle that. And in terms of curriculum, we created uh, in one year, we managed to create seven academic programs at graduate level. We, we, uh, we work one in organizational communication, cybersecurity, uh, there was uh, one in, uh, there was a doctorate in second language research. That one, we were waiting for the approval of that, for that one. Uh, human resources, service operation management, et cetera. And we're looking into courses to see because some of these courses were designed about ten, a decade ago. So probably what they're teaching in business or is, needs to be revised to see what we can add. In terms of, 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 of taking into consideration the different uh, learning styles of our students, because we have a diverse population of students that have 40, 60 years of age, and then we have the one that has 18 and they learn differently, and we need to be able to provide to uh, those students and then the course design for new new courses that uh, uh, have been in the program and what we're looking to is get more science we're trying to encourage our science faculty to create online courses I, they're a bit resistant to the thought of it I don't know why because I think it would be amazing to study uh, the things you could do with the new technologies and what's available out there with science but and with health sciences and those are the groups that we are getting more res most resistant from, from. And we managed to get like the nurse facu nursing faculty to uh, interest in, in, in doing one at graduate level. So I'm gonna leave you, that's my intervention for now. Uh, I'm gonna leave you my colleague, Erica Sigmund. She's gonna talk about the English project in more detail because that was a really big project. It's an ongoing project and I think it has resulted in really nice things. I'm just curious, how many of you are faculty members, or do we have administrators here? Anyone faculty? Okay. Um, well, I am a, the, well, there are two English faculty members within the, the distance learning department right now. Um, the change, changing from the humanistic and pedagogical studies department to officially distance learning uh, had a big effect on me personally, so because we're talking about how we've developed over time. Um, because it really gave me a sense of ownership of 
not just the course I was teaching at the particular time, but, but all the courses that make up the general education program, the component of English within the general education program that we offer online. Okay, um, I'm gonna talk very briefly about four, well, one project that's had, has many, kind of an octopus, not eight, but we have four different things that we're briefly touch on today. You're gonna hear me make reference to basic level courses or intermediate level courses. And uh, the general education program has basically requires students to take three English courses. What, what varies is which courses they take based on level. Okay, so basic level, though, these are, are very low learners. They, they have to take 1101, two and three. Uh, we're talking, we start off with the verb to be, I am, you are. <laughs> um, so the vast majority of our students are at that level. Okay, well the intermediate level courses, level one, two, and three are, are really developmental. We have reading comprehension skills, going into essay writing, vocabulary development, it, higher level. Uh, advanced is what uh, one of the presenters this morning said was very basic English composition. That, that's like college English, you know, essay writing, analysis of literature, and a research project. So what my, my uh, our colleagues who were saying this morning was basic English for me is actually our advanced level of the general education program. So what I'm gonna be talking about mostly is this basic level and intermediate level. Uh, the majority of our students fall into that basic category and we need them to stay. <laughs> we want them to stay, we wanna help them and that population is really, really varied. Okay, so once became an online faculty member officially, I'm like, oh, this is my baby, um, to a certain extent, and I started to take some action or, or start thinking about some, some issues that <coughs> caught my attention when I was just offering one or two courses, but you don't really do anything about it, okay? Now, if you wanna ask any questions as I'm going, please do, because I just put a brief little snippet there um, and, and let me know. Okay. Um, I started off basically asking myself, are we meeting our students' needs in the quick English courses effectively? Okay, uh, so basically an informal needs assessment. Um, because the needs assessment really influences student placement, material selection, curriculum design, and the instructional process. Uh, what I'm going to show you are ways or actions we've taken that uh, deal with student placement. Um, material selection. We've done some really, we've taken some big steps this year in the English component of the PEG. Um, PEG is the general education program, excuse me. So. Um, curriculum design. You can see our course, my courses are, are all changing this year. And, and just general <coughs> tools within the instructional process. Um, let me see. I don't, I don't like this. <laughs> okay. Is this on? Hello? Uh, yes? Uh, Can I press it? Yeah. Press here? Okay. No? no. Ooh. Okay, I don't think I like this. Um, okay. Uh, at Inter-American University, when students enter, they use generally college board scores uh, to establish what courses they're going to be taking if it's int basic, intermediate, or advanced level, okay? Uh, reality is that many of our online or distance learning students who are not in Puerto Rico didn't take a college board. So over the, cu the couple of years, uh, you're interacting with students, doing student advising, talk to someone on the phone, I'm like, wait a minute, you are a bilingual person and you are in my 1101 course. What's going on here? So as I became a, a full-time faculty member, we thought, wow, we can take advantage of an opportunity here. And what we did this past year for the first time is have all of our students take a placement test. What we did for this first uh, attempt, and, and we are, we're continuing this, all of this is ongoing, is have everyone in the basic level courses, level one, two, three, whether starting the courses or the finishing, and the intermediate level courses take that same test. Um, because we want to see who's really there, okay? Now, I only took one group and have a very simple graph here, but
but it, it, it's symptomatic of what we found. Actually, we did this also with the, the on-campus population, and the same issues came up, interestingly. But anyway, if you see here, we had, uh, if you look at this, zero to 30 points, these people should be in the basic level courses. If a student tested and the placement test and got a score of 31 to 42, they would be intermediate level. If they got 43 to 50, they're in advanced level. This is a group of new students, new students who are just coming in. This is probably their first English course, and this could be their first English course online. Um, and it's their first time on Blackboard. Uh, there are so many different factors here, and I'm looking at wait a minute, what's going on here? Immediately, alarm bells go off in, in terms of retention. Because what's gonna happen with my advanced people? Are they gonna, how do you feel doing I am, you are, he is, first week? Uh-uh. Uh, lose interest, they're immediately at risk. Immediately at risk. Although, some hide there though, right? They, they know they're in the wrong place. Anyway, um, and then, these intermediate level people too possibly at risk because they're going to be in a course that's too simple. It may not meet their needs. Then this basic English section, really interesting. Since I could see the results in my section, I could see everyone's scores. I had three students who got zeros in this group. Is that um, technological skills? They don't know how to deal with Blackboard. They open the assessment and go, oh my gosh, just listening, I don't know what to do because it is listening, reading, and writing. Uh, that could be a factor, they're new students. You don't, uh, I don't know how to su submit an assignment. All of those issues are enormous factors in retaining a student throughout the semester, okay? Um, and we could see that there were quite a few students who really actually tested, I don't have it here, below 15 points. So if they're below 15, they are the kids who came in from, from after high school and their English, not so great. And most likely they haven't had a positive experience in, in the, the schools. Um, they probably have their effective filter way up here uh, and they're on an online course now, okay? So it, it was very, very interesting for me to see this actually, because we had never seen it. Everything is college board. Um, we're working on